Reillusion allows you to create and animate production quality avatars. They have a few different programs available. So there's Character Creator for the creation of 3D characters with add-ons like Headshot that generates a digital avatar from just a single photo and add-ons for things like uh, additional skin textures and morphs. Um, then there's the program iClone, which is for creating and adding animations, which, al uh, which also has um, plugins like Motion Live, which allows you to animate in real time using various trackers and even a webcam or phone for facial anim animations and um, a whole lot more. And they also have like an online content library, which also and also has the ability to connect to the DAS 3D library. So I'm not really going to go into detail on how to use the different Reillusion programs. I'm just showing how you can bring these into Wizard. And there's a lot of tutorials on the website, or you can also go to the help menu and get more video tutorials and stuff on how to use the various programs. But um, if you're starting from the creation side, you would start with Character Creator and then uh, send your avatar over to iClone, as that's where you would add your animations. And so I'm just starting here in iClone, as that's where I would most likely export from after adding animations. And so once you have that set up, you just go up to File, Export, and then Export FBX. And then you're going to choose the 3ds Max preset. And then if you have an animation, you can choose whether you want to export all the frames or a range of frames or just the current frame. And then you can just click export and then you can save this to a file and call it whatever you want. And now once that saves, I'll show you how you bring it into Wizard and set it up for a, a Wizard application. I'm going to open up the FBX file in a Wizard Inspector tool. So you go to Tools, Inspector, and then just go to File Open to open up the FBX, or you can set to have FBX files opened automatically with Inspector, which is how I have it. And so now I come in looking flat at first, so you can hit um, Control L and then see a just a default kind of light facing on the avatar. And so the first thing I'm going to check uh, is the scale. So if you click here on this top root node, and you can see this is a large size. So you want this probably to be at 1.8. It's kind of a default height in the y-axis. But if I could just also, I could just do the uniform scale and just put in a 0 0.01 here, and that should bring it down from coming out of character creator. So now you can see this is 1.81, so that's a little bit better size. And also you want to make sure to have effects toggled on, otherwise, yeah, you don't get the uh, right look on the shaders. So you'll notice here the hair looks a little weird, so if you click over here on the hair geometry, you can um, click on modes, go to alpha to coverage and cull face, and with those options, turn blend off, call face off, and alpha to coverage on, and then I'll do that on the next piece of hair. Now you'll see it actually looks a lot better. And down here you see these are the uh, animations. So whatever animations you brought over with the avatar from iClone, this is just a idle animation. But I could also go and if you click here on this little root, the root node with the little avatar icon, and then you right click, you can go to import and you could add additional animations. So um, if I click import, now this will bring in a, a different animation that I could use. So now I can see I have a second animation that will play. And you can access these animations in your wizard script. And so these, each one of these has a number, and that's just the number that you refer to in your wizard script, which I'll show in the code later. And then also you have um, facial morphs. So if you click over here and you click on the name, you see that these facial morphs are available. And so you can 
toggle through these and then to preview the change that that makes you can click left click and drag on the slider and similar to the animations where you have a state with the uh, morphs you get this ID number for the morph that you'll be accessing in the code and one last thing to keep in mind with the uh, real illusion avatars is you actually are going to need to rotate 180 degrees in the yaw since they come in facing the wrong direction from the standard wizard avatars you're going to want to put the 180 in the yaw as well and now once you're done setting up this avatar then you can go to file save as and then save it into your uh, work folder where you're going to save your wizard script and your um, other resources and so now I'm going to go and open up this environment that I got out of Sketchfab <coughs> which I downloaded as a GLTF which is the most consistent way to get models out of Sketchfab into Wizard. so you just choose GLTF when you download and so now if I want to see how this avatar is going to look within my scene I can go to file add now bring in the uh, avatar model and so I've already added some lights in here so you can kind of see maybe if I toggle off these lights you can see the difference and then you just turn off the default lighting so this is with no lighting and then so first I added a directional light which kind of gives a light coming from one direction and then you can adjust the intensity of that just by left clicking and dragging here on the light and then I changed the color a little bit and then I added a spotlight and for the spotlight I, I toggled on shadows so you can have shadows in your scene coming off from where that spotlight is and then I also adjusted the intensity a little bit and the, the lighting and then also another spotlight with a different color also, I adjusted the uh, angle, which is kind of like how wide the spotlight is showing over there. And then if you click also on the uh, light, you can move, rotate. So with the spotlights, you're going to have to sometimes click up here and rotate. And then you could choose kind of the angle or the position of it. And then another important thing with the... Um, lighting is if you click up here on the scene node you're going to want to change sometimes the ambient light of the overall scene and then also the exposure kind of how dark the overall scene is in the ambient light and you want to make sure to click save scene, scene settings so those actually apply to your scene and so now you can kind of see a little bit more how this avatar will look within the environment and so once you're done with that um, setup, you can actually remove the avatar because you're going to add the avatar back actually in the code. So you can right click and go to delete. And then you just want to save your environment model also in that same folder. And so the last step is just looking at the code that you would use to bring this avatar in. And so this is the, the wizard IDE and you want to make sure this, the files that you're working on, that you save them into the, uh, same folder where you have your resources and so this is the most simple kind of wizard script that just opens up the viz module to get all the viz commands and then viz effects for the shaders viz.go to open up the graphics window and then you're adding your environment here and then adding your avatar and that's the basic kind of setup and here's a bit more code that shows you how you can add a hardware configuration um, using the viz connect tool and so there's a lot more information on that in the visitor documentation but really quick to show you it's just under tools viz connect and then you would save this in the location where you have your um, rest of your files here and you can choose either from one of the presets or you can go to the uh, advanced settings and choose from hundreds of different types of tracking systems and displays and input devices but I'm just using the, the Vive preset. And so that's what this VizConnect config is. And this part of the code is just showing you how you can access and trigger a facial morph. 
and this section here is just locking the bones of the avatar so that you can manually move them which uh, moves to the last section where we're having the avatar automatically face towards the user and so now if I run this and now you can see the avatar in your wizard scene so that's it for now uh, remember to subscribe to our youtube channel for more tutorials and for questions on any of our products visit our website at www.worldviz.com or contact sales at worldviz.com